Hello and welcome back to Syndicate Gaming. My name is Jim uh, and I just wanted to do a quick video. Well, quick for our channel. It's only going to be like 15 minutes or something. Normally our videos are pretty long. But I, I just wanted to do a quick update on Criminal Syndicate just because that's my main faction and there's a bunch of new toys for them. Uh, I just wanted to do a brief overview and change to our previous tier list um really quick uh we are gonna put out a new tier list next week uh i know it's been a little while it's, it's like been a couple months since we've done a tier list but we're gonna meet up and make it happen so uh you know that's really uh fun and you know like we just love making those tier lists they're like a ton of fun people comment a lot uh they just take a long time and it's it's hard for us to all meet up at the same time but uh, yeah, so uh, I'm just gonna jump in here. I'm gonna go through each character, see if my mind has changed on it on any of them, uh, which I think like a decent amount of them might actually move um, just because I've had more play time with them or their card literally changed or in a couple cases, there's brand new characters. So uh, yeah, let's just hop in. So starting with Rhino, he's at the very top of S tier. Uh, I think Rhino is still S tier, but I might actually bump him down a little bit below Kingpin, just because we have so many good four threats now. Like, I I don't feel like I need to bring him every single game. Uh, but he will be in every single one of my rosters, so he's still worthy of S. Um, Kingpin, I still think is S. He should be in every Criminal Syndicate roster. Um. Oh, so just really quick, this is going to be based on our previous tier list video, so I'm going to try not to rehash anything that I said there, but that will give context to what's happening here in this video. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to leave Kingpin and Bullseye exactly where they are in S tier. Uh, so now our first major change might be Classic MODOK. And I guess I'm going to go ahead and do Modoc Scientist Supreme as well. So uh, I have played more with Modoc Scientist Supreme and seen him in action, like at the Nova Open, which we all went to, which was a lot of fun. Uh, and there were actually like five or six criminal players on our day. So that was just Heat 1. And most of them were playing Modoc over Shadowland Daredevil. And that got me thinking, you know, maybe he's better than I thought. And uh, he is better than I thought. Uh, I don't think Shadowland Daredevil is bad or anything, but I think Modoc brings a little bit more to the table. He's just got that range for, he can put out status conditions. I really love, you know, passing attacks to like Taskmaster, who just got buffed. I think Taskmaster is great with Modoc Scientist Supreme, so that helps him out. The new Crossbones likes him. So yeah, I'm going to bump up Modoc Scientist Supreme to A, I think. Uh, so that means classic Modoc is going to see less and less play, which is sad. Like, I love Modoc, but I think he's still going to find a home in the new Red Skull Cabal. So I think he'll do well there. But I think in Criminals, I'm going to bump him down to maybe lower B. Just because I'm playing Modoc Scientist Supreme more often. So I just can't use uh, Classic Modoc. Um, which also comes into play with Claw. I've, I've like really like Claw as my five threat criminal. Uh, he, he was awesome for me at Nova. Um, like, whenever I played him, he was getting off huge beams with Pierce doing tons of damage. He was shocking people. Well, not not doing the shock status condition, but he was shocking the other player at how, like, good he was. So, uh, I'm going to leave Claw at A, actually. Um, I don't think he's competitive as a leader, which I have tried. It's fun. I don't think it's, like, tournament worthy. But uh, going back to our final leader here. Shadowland Daredevil. I think I'm liking Modoc better just because he brings the like defensive tech. And also the new uh 
um, Miss Nachios here is kind of coming up on his unique space of being the grunt character, right? Like now you can bring a different character with the exact same grunt, so that makes Daredevil a little less unique, right? So I'm going to bump him down to B. I think it's still totally fine to play Shadowland Daredevil, and you can definitely build a roster with him as your focus, you know, with rapid fire characters, you know, people with charge, all that kind of stuff. Like he's great with the new crossbones, like rerolling a die on every single beam attack is like kind of ridiculous. So yeah, the leaders got shaken up a little bit here. Uh, it's always good to see. So now Ulik, um, I haven't played with Ulik a whole lot. I do like Juggernaut a lot. Like, I like splashing Juggernaut in in Ulik's place, which, again, from the previous video, that's just, like, a personal preference. Like, he's so good on paper, but I think I'm going to bump him to the bottom of A just because, I mean, I don't, I personally don't put him in my rosters, but I know people do. Um, so now Gwenpool, I think we rated Gwenpool too highly. Uh, she was brand new when we did the tier list videos, so none of us had games with her. And she's another character that looks great on paper. But when I tried her, she's really held back by not being able to place herself while she's holding something. And that's like the name of the game with criminals right like with kingpin you're trying to outscore modok to get the leadership you have to be holding something or standing on a point so yeah i don't know she's just awkward and clunky and there's so many good four threats so i think i'm gonna bump her all the way down to c honestly that's like quite the tumble but i just i just don't see a place for her with the way I'm currently running criminals. You know, she is cool. You know, I should probably test her some more, but for now, put her in C. Uh so Hood. Um Hood was my go to three threat. There's nothing wrong with him. I think currently I'm liking other three threats more. So I might put him just below Shadowland Daredevil. I will say he's one of our only sources of mystic. Uh in criminals, like it's only Hood, Modoc, Mysterio, if I'm not mistaken. Or I guess um she has Mystic too. But she's a four threat. So so at three threat, he's our only source. So if I feel like I need to shore up that weakness, I'll definitely put Hood back in. But one of the reasons he's tumbling is because of Black Hat, which Black Hat was changed with the character update, that's for sure. Her steel now costs an action, but she's a lot tankier, so you can't blow up your crits against her or reroll dice. And I think that actually helps her more in criminals, uh, mostly with Kingpin. But with like Modok, you know, she's gonna reroll a defense die that could help her out. Or no, no, I'm sorry, not reroll, but um, from a wild she can change a result. So I'm gonna bump her up to A actually. She was at the top of B last time, and I think the changes really benefit her. And she's the only long mover in criminals. So I think that alone puts her up pretty highly. So uh, I wouldn't be too down on Black Cat. I think she's great. All right, who's next? Green Goblin. Um, Yeah, honestly, I'm going to put him in C as well. I just... <laughs> Like, if you're doing the spider foe splash, which might be more viable with the next batch of characters coming out, you know, sure, throw him in. But I think he just falls a little bit. He doesn't really fit in with the other leaders. Like, you know, he likes the leaderships, but there's no... He doesn't bring anything unique or special, right? He has, like, no character control. And I personally really value character control. So yeah, I'm going to bump him down. Uh, so Killmonger, I think he's still a B. He's great with MODOK, with the Pierce. Your wilds are counting as like three, which is crazy. You know, love Shadowland. You know, nothing's really changed for him. I'm going to leave him right where he is. Uh, Mysterio. Hmm. 
I think I'm going to bump him down because he's so slow, right? And I think the new crossbones is good enough to bump him out, and you really can't take multiple small base short movers, right? Like, that's just too much of a liability. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a shame because I love Mysterio, but he's just never the character I'm going to, right? Uh, but now for some positive news, Taskmaster. I think the new Taskmaster is great for criminals. So they literally only gave him a power gain on his, um, his uh, range for uh, shield throw. And that's, that's literally what we said in the last video. We were like, if he gained power off of his shield throw, he'd be great. And he is. I think he's like our second three threat behind Black Cat. So I don't know if that puts him at the bottom of A or maybe top of B. I might do top of B. Um, could see taking Hood over him. So basically why that's so good with the shield throw is because we need 10 power to play the card to steal priority, right? So he can literally stand on a home point, range four throw, that can ricochet into somebody else, and you honestly don't even care about the damage. You just care about getting that one or two power. Um, and then once they finally come and try to kill him, He's tanky because he has mar martial artists. He gets extra dice on his defense. Like, um, but he's really good with Modoc Scientist Supreme because he can pass off attacks to Taskmaster. So it's like, oh, hey, you know, this attack is physical. I'm going to put it into Taskmaster. Oh, it's Mystic? I'm going to leave it on Modoc. So, yeah, then he has this crazy spender too that people sleep on. Like, Taskmaster is probably going to die most of your games if you're doing it correctly. And I think that's totally fine. Like, that's his whole job, right? He's like, you know, he's going to be a pest with the shield throws. He's going to take attacks for MODOK. He's going to be tanky for Kingpin. Like, yeah, I think Taskmaster is great. I might actually put him at the bottom of A. Like, Black Hat and Taskmaster go to three threats. And they were both changed in the update. So maybe that's just, you know, uh recency bias but uh yeah that's just where i'm at right now so craven i was really so there's a few characters here at the bottom that i was surprised they weren't changed in this character update and i'm a little bit disappointed because i feel like the update was very good guy focus like hero focus you know x-men spider-man got changed not a whole lot of villains got changed um which i hope they correct that like i really wanted craven to get like one more health on his healthy side right because five five uh with just a reroll three defenses is like not good enough right um i might bump him down to d like i don't see a time where you take craven Maybe if you're doing the spider foe splash, but with four leaders, you really don't need to do that. So yeah, hopefully Craven gets an update soon or gets some kind of benefit from the new uh the new uh foes coming out next year. So crossbows, the classic crossbows. Um I think he's in D. Because there's a new crossbows, right? There's a cooler, prettier crossbows that we want to play with, right? So, like, when you have a new Alter Ego that's come out, all of the other versions of that character are just going to see less play. Because, I mean, you just can't play both of them, right? I mean, this is the exact same situation with the Modox. So, like, he was already borderline CD. And with the new version of him coming out that I think is just better, he's really not going to see play, honestly. Which, you know, like, is a shame. The only thing he has going for him is that he can play the cards. Um, and he can't even play the new Crossroads card because it's Cabal only, which is a real shame. 
And I don't think it would have been like OP or anything in criminals. Like, I think it's something like, um, he gets to reroll defense dice and can't be moved for the round. Yeah, so he plays it. He can't be moved by enemy or allied effects, and he can reroll his defense dice, but it's Cabal only. Like, that would obviously be good in Criminals, but I don't think it would be, like, overpowered or anything. So I think that they played it a little bit safe, which is a shame. Because, you know, both versions only have two Mystic in it, uh, defense. So, like, he still has weaknesses, right? So, like, you know, rerolling two defense dice is basically nothing. Um, so yeah, poor Crossbones. He's in the bin. Uh, Red, I mean, he's in Winter Guard now, which is cool. I guess you could splash with Winter Guard if you wanted to. <laughs> you can play Winter Soldier, uh, Red. But, you know, I think he's still C. Like, he's fine if you want to play him. But I would never, like, he's never my first choice. Uh, then Sin, yeah, Sin is still D. I really wish she worked with the new Crossbones, or that she got changed. Like, she's probably, like, my biggest disappointment of not getting changed, right? Like, she's really fun to play, has a unique leadership, but there's just no reason to play her, right? Like, only four health on the healthy side. She has a guaranteed rapid fire, which is nice, but... She just dies too easily and then doesn't really do a whole lot. So that's a shame. Hopefully something happens with her. Uh, now, finally, Miss Electra. She obviously got a change. It's not a, it's not a huge change, you know? It's not game-breaking. Literally, they gave her one power on her Ancient Throwing Blades and an extra physical defense. And... I think that's enough for her to see play. Like, she will see play now, but in Criminals, I'm not convinced, right? Like, I think she's good with Shadowland Daredevil because she gets the reroll. You can do cool stuff with the grunts coming in and out multiple times. I uh, actually think she's really good with Claw as a leader because now she's, like, much more viable like, basically, I would bring a grunt character with claw leadership just to, you know, have them kill themselves so claw can move. And now that she's much more viable herself, like, that's that's a good thing, right? And then, you know, Kingpin, she has the power to step in to range one to get on a point and steal it. Like, I think she has play. I personally haven't tried it yet, to be honest. So I'm probably going to put her in B, but that's a lot better than where she was in D. Like, before, she was, like, almost unplayable. But now I think there's a lot of merit to her. I think she can be good with Modoc too, honestly. With Martial Prowess, you can change a die. You're more likely to get a wild. You can do a ton of damage if you get that wild on the throwing blades. So, yeah, I think she's worth testing out for sure. She goes to 5 health on her injured side. It's a little bit unfortunate, but oh well. I think the main thing is she brings her grunts. So, like, with all these characters, they can vanish, give somebody, a, like, a token, you know, like, Modoc doesn't have to go up to the middle to grab a hammer or whatever. Uh, so, yeah, that's the old characters. There was actually quite a bit of shuffling there. I kind of surprised myself, to be honest. Uh, there's an extra character, D, which is unfortunate, but what are you what, what, going to do? It's pretty balanced. Now, new characters. There's two new characters since we did the tier list. And the first one is my man Mbaku. I did a little like YouTube post about him when he came out and he was in criminals. Because I suspected he was going to be in criminals, but we weren't positive, right? So we left him out. But now that he's in and I've tried him, I think he's great. He's kind of like the anti big boy tech, kind of like Vader Ray Bill that we talked about. And maybe I just roll really well with him, but I, I like get the triggers all the time and it's like phenomenal, right? It's like wild pursuit. He's chasing people. He's pushing people away. Like he's good with both of the leaders. Like I've played him with 
Modoc and Claw. He was great with both of them. He gives you the splash with like Wakanda if you want to do that. Like, you know, you can play Killmonger. Black Panther is great in Criminal Syndicate. Like, that's an easy splash if you wanted to go that route. So, you know, he, he has a throw for a ton of damage. His only issue is getting into um, that range three, you know, because he doesn't have a charge. He doesn't have a way to place himself. Like, he needs to, like, turn one, honestly, just, like, double move him to the middle and set yourself up for round two. You know, don't be crazy and do that on your first play so he gets killed and keep him away from energy. But, yeah, uh, I think he's great. I've had a ton of fun playing him, too. Also, he randomly can't be stunned. So this has kind of made me think about playing Mayor Fisk. You know, it's the two points in the middle. They're each worth two, but they stun you. He is great on that, right? So that's something to consider as well. I'm going to put him... Is he A tier? Is he our best four threat besides Rhino? Rhino and Baku. Well, I mean... Our like leaders are obviously four threats. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna put him at the bottom of A. Uh, I think he's really good. Um, is he better than Electra? Hmm. I mean, they do such different things, right? But I think in most of my criminal list, I'm more likely to play Mbaku than Electra at the moment. Again, you know, this could change. I haven't done enough testing. And I barely have time to, you know, play the game and do these videos. So, <laughs> you know, take this with a grain of salt. But, all right, then finally, Crossbows, Merciless Merc, our new core set character. I've built him. I think he's actually right here. Where is he? He's over here somewhere. I have the new core set. It's great. Super awesome model. There he is. I love it. Way better than the old one. But as far as how he does in Criminals, he has this crazy beam that's like super good. It's really good with Shadowland Daredevil. It's great with Modoc for damage, right? Uh, He's got the throw, hit and run. I think he's a good three threat. I'm going to put him at B. Um... I don't think he's as good as Black Cat or Taskmaster, but I think he's definitely worth considering. And his main weakness is how slow he is, right? So I'm not going to grab him every game, but he's definitely one to consider and to test out, right? I really wish he worked with Sin. That'd be so awesome. But yeah, so there's my thoughts on how criminals are doing. Oh, really quick, I also wanted to mention the Winter Soldiers because the new Soldat activated card is a criminal card. Um, it's a little bit unfortunate. Neither of them are actually in criminals, but I think the card is really cool. Like, you can give a leader cover, you can do counterattacks, gain extra power. This is probably best with Shadowland, Daredevil, or Modoc. Because with Shadowland Daredevil, like, you know, he's making extra attacks. He's getting the reroll. He has the power to, like, Hydra Tactics turn one to get into range. Uh, I think it's good. And then, four threat Winter Soldier. I've played him once or twice. He's fine. I don't know if he's worth splashing into criminals. Um, but the, 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 like three threat Winter Soldier, I think is still good and worth considering. Mainly Shadowland Daredevil. So, yeah, uh, that's going to be it. Quickish video for the channel. <laughs> uh, um, let me know what you guys think. You know, make sure you comment, like, subscribe, do all that kind of stuff. I love reading all your comments. I try and reply to all of them. Um, you know, there are some I miss, but I love, you know, having the chats with you guys in the comments. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching the video. We'll see you in a week. Hopefully we're filming a tier list of Cabal. So that's going to be a long one. It'll be a lot of fun, but yeah, you have that to look forward to. So, all right. I will see you guys soon.